What up, YouTube? It's your boy, True Hero. And today, we're taking a break from the special guests, bringing you back to your first love. Me, me. That's right, a true hero. So, this match I'm up against, Ledia. And for those of you who don't know, Ledia is on the War League team, the Bungle Boys, who are currently undefeated. Ledia is an amazing goaded player. And the reason why I chose this match for us to spectate today is because it was a Diva Hero mirror match. But not just typical Diva Hero A versus typical Diva Hero B, but rather the list that was popularized by myself versus the list that was popularized by Televisual. So let's see what's better, old school or new school Diva Hero. Now, before we get into the video, I wanna give a shout out to my Patreon. Guys, if you're really interested in seeing the channel grow, please consider subscribing to my Patreon. It means a lot. And with that out the way, let's get into the duel. So for this set, I actually do lose the RPS. So what I'm gonna do actually is I'm actually just gonna press show hand. That way I can explain things from my perspective without a biased point of view. So you can really get into the mind of a true hero. So when I look at my opening hand, this is terrible. This is absolutely terrible. For the most part, I don't really have any playable cards. And it's actually one of the reasons why I've been playing Black Wings more frequently. And at the end of the set, I make note of this because sometimes with Diva Hero, as powerful as the deck is, you pull hands where you can't really do much. So I lose the RPS and at this time, I'm unaware that Ledia is actually on Diva Hero until he starts for Deep Sea Diva herself. And then I realize that he must be on Diva Hero. He sets a monster and he passes. Now, once again, I have no thoughts that he is on the televisual version. So I'm thinking that the set monster must be a Sangan or a Spirit Reaper. Because if I had a read that that was Gravekeeper Spy, I would have went off this turn. I could have went Mind Control, take the Spy, flip the Spy, summon Diva, get Diva, make Brio, set a back row, bounce the back row by sending Malicious, make Stardust, attack with Brio, attack with Stardust, set two back rows, pass, and I have Brain Control as a follow-up. So very, very, very powerful turn one. But once again, I have a read that it is a Sangan or a Spear Reaper, which would result in a level three monster. Now, granted, one play that I could have potentially done if I had a read it was a level three monster was go Mind Control, check, and then go Diva, get Spine Gilman, make a level eight. But the problem with that play is if my read is a level three monster and I make a level eight monster, there's no good level eight with the hand that I have that serves as a good out to Gores. So let's say that I make Stardust, it could get ran over by zero. Dark End, well now he gets a strong token. Or even if I make Colossal Fighter. Colossal Fighter is not bad, but the problem with Colossal Fighter is he would lose to a Caius, right? So it's not really safe to blind mind control in this situation. So what do I do? I just set Torrential and I pass. Now, it's Ledia's turn once again. He sets a back row and he passes, and I draw into Gold Sark. Gold Sark, as I have stated before, I definitely believe that this card belongs in Diva Hero. And we have seen the success that it has brought many duelists, such as myself, Ledia's playing it now, Televisual has played in it, Mad Robot, Bad Robot. So there are so many different duelists who have seen success with Gold Sark and Diva Hero. But as I always have said before, the best way to play Diva Hero is the way that you feel most comfortable. Now, the merits of playing Gold Sark are you can fetch your most powerful cards at the drop of a dime, be it Deep Sea Diva, Future Fusion, Dark Arm, etc. In some cases, even reinforcements of the army. So that's exactly what I Sark for. Now, the reason why I Sark for Rhoda in this case is because if I Rhoda into a Dark Greffer, I'm one card away from an OTK, that one card being Miracle Fusion. But even without a Miracle Fusion, I can go Pitch Molly, Special Summon Greffer, Normal Summon Diva, Get Diva, and I can make a level six and a level eight in one turn with little commitment because this play is only made with just three cards, Greffer, Molly, Diva. So it's a very, very powerful play and it's not committal. Now at this point, I set Mind Crush because it's been the second turn for Gold Sark. So I know that Ledia is going to be adding Deep Sea Diva. So Immediately, I mind crush the diva and it gets dropped. Now, at this point, 
Ledia finally reveals that he's on the spy version of Diva Hero because he flips up Gravekeeper Spy. Now, generally, when you're up against decks that play Spy and Descendant, it's best to ask your opponent for priority. The reason being is because, let's say they you have a bottomless trap hole set. In this case, I have Torrential, so it's not quite the same. But let's say you have a bottomless trap hole set. If you ask your opponent for priority and you bottomless the Descendant, then they're going to lose both the monster they tributed, which is likely the Spy, and their Descendant. So it becomes a two for one. So generally, when players flip up Spy and get Descendant, good players don't use priority because if you have bottomless, it forces you to use it in that moment. And then the bottomless only would hit the Descendant. So they would keep one card on the field, which is their Gravekeeper Spy. So I asked him for Pryo. Once again, Lydia is very good. Lydia is very good. So he says no. So I'm forced to Torrential at this point or else he will activate the effect. I'll lose to Torrential. And then he summons Stratos. Stratos, he adds Prodigy. So I'm a bit worried because Stratos, if you leave it on the field in the mirror match, it could become very deadly. As I've mentioned twice already, one of the key plays that this deck can do to put on a lot of damage is a level four monster plus Deep Sea Diva, be that Stratos or Dark Refer. So if I keep that Stratos on the board, then there's a potential chance that Lydia can go off next turn. However, the likelihood of him having a Diva is low because he had the Gold Sark for one. So that kind of tells you that he doesn't have a tuner in his hand. Now I'll draw on the Sangan, which is not bad, and I think about what to do. And I decide to actually go for the explosive play because I'm thinking that although it's unlikely he has a tuner, he could potentially have a Caius. So if I just set the Sangan and pass, then I could get Caius. So at this point, I have a read that the back row is a bottomless trap hole, but then he surprises me with Phoenix Wing Wind Blast and he bounces his own Stratos, which is really, really good because now... I'm left with a field of just double Deep Sea Diva, and I can't follow this play up at all. And this, once again, is why I wish that I had reinforcement of the army a turn sooner, because if I did have Rota, then I can actually Rota for Greffer and then pitch Molly Special Summon Greffer, and this Wing Blast would be irrelevant. However, Lydia makes the heads up play and returns his own Stratos to the top of the deck. So I attack for 200, and hopefully he doesn't have Gores. Thankfully, he didn't. And even if he did, he realizes that there's not much value getting out of a Gorge drop on a Deep Sea Diva. And he draws Stratos for turn. So what he decides to do is actually make his own level 8 Colossal Fighter. And he allures away the Prodigy that he added with Stratos the prior turn. So Colossal Fighter is able to run over Diva, and I take a lot of damage. So as you can see, I'm in a really bad situation. And then I draw for turn Miracle Fusion. This has been the second turn for Gold Sark, so I add Rota to my hand. Now, it's quite interesting because, once again, if I had Deep Sea Diva, I would be able to go for the Diva Hero OTK, which is a level 6, a level 8, and Absolute Zero. Oftentimes, Brio, Colossal Fighter, Zero. Now, I've already used Deep Sea Diva, so I don't have a tuner. What I could do, there's two different plays that I could do. I could set Sangan and go passive, go for a passive play, and potentially add Deep Sea Diva to my hand the next turn. The only problem with that is I'm at 3,500 and I don't have any traps at all. So if Lydia puts up any aggression on his turn, I'll lose the duel. So even though that's a really good play because it can set up for the OTK, it's not worth it. Not to mention, think about what Lydia did last turn. Last turn, he went Mind Control, my Deep Sea Diva, Banish Molly for Molly, make Colossal Fighter. And we know that he has Stratos in his hand because it went to the top of deck with Wing Blast, but he didn't summon Stratos. So what does that tell you? It tells you that he pulled into Gores. Lydia, once again, being a high profile player, recognizes that if I start for Rota, I'm going to go for a big push on this turn. So rather than summoning Stratos, he actually doesn't summon it because it's a indication he has Gores in his hand. So... I'm forced to make the offensive play anyway. So I wrote up for Greffer and activate Greffer's effect. Pitch Molly, pitch Plague. Stack a card for Plague. Unfortunately, the Sangan's not gonna get much value this turn. And I make a level eight monster. Now the level eight that I make is Colossal. There was considerations to making other level eight such as Dark End, 
However, the problem with making Darkin is if I don't kill him, then Darkin can be used against me with cards like Brain Control. So I decide to actually just go for game. Now I have a read that he has Gores, but unfortunately, there's no way I could play around Gores. So I go for the game shot and it's like, if you got it, you got it. And he takes 17, he takes 25, and then he drops Gores. So my read was correct. He did indeed have the Gores. So I'm forced to just run over both the Gores and the Gores token and hand them back his Colossal Fighter. Now, this is not a bad position to be in at all, because when we look at his graveyard, although he does have Hero in the Water, he likely doesn't have a Miracle Fusion because he hasn't been playing toward it the entire game. So Lydia is in a tough spot. And actually, at this point in time, he even takes two minutes to make his decision, right? Now, I'm all for players taking their time, but I do think two minutes is a bit excessive to make a play. Now, what Lydia ultimately decides to do is to run over my Greffer and sack for Caius. And this is exactly why I was saying earlier the problem with making Colossal Fighter into an open board was that it loses to Caius. So he sacks for Caius, he banishes my Colossal Fighter, and he ends his turn. So I draw into return, which is a really, really good draw off the top because look at my banish zone. I have every Diva Hero's wet dream, right? <laughs> like I have Double Molly, Plague, Diva, and a Colossal Fighter. So this is perfect. Now I run over his Caius and it's important to note here, at this point in the game, Lydia has only set one back row, which is Phoenix Wing, Wing Blast. So actually, let's just take a look at his hand. We can see that he has all monsters. So that was the point that I was getting to, that Lydia has an all monster hand. So he draws for turn. So what does he draw off the top? So I set my return. So he draws off the top Torrential, right? So now Lydia is forced to just play defensively. So he sets a monster, sets the card that he just drew off the top for turn. Now, what do I draw off the top? I draw Heavy Storm. And the reason why Heavy Storm is such a good top deck here is because if I play Heavy Storm first and Chain Return, Lydia is unable to respond with Torrential or Bottomless because of the order the chain resolves. You cannot activate Torrential until the monster successfully hits the field. So let's think about how this would work. It would go Chain Link 1, Heavy Storm. Chain Link 2, Return. Which means there's no opportunity for Torrential to be activated because it cannot activate in the middle of a resolving chain. So I go for that play. I play Heavy Storm, I chain return, and his Torrential gets destroyed by Heavy Storm and I'm able to summon out all my guys from Return from a Different Dimension. Now, what I wanna highlight is, yes, it is very fortunate that I was able to draw Heavy Storm off the top, but at the same time, in Lydia's case, it's also very fortunate for him that he drew the one card that would have stopped me, which is Torrential. Because if he drew any other card, such as Bottomless or Mirror Force or Deep Prison, none of those cards do anything to stop a return from a different dimension. So that's definitely Yu-Gi-Oh! Like sometimes you pull into your great cards and sometimes your opponent does too. So I'm able to finish the game off here because obviously I was going to go for a dark end play and then attack with everything for game. Now game two. Game two, I open up good and bad. And that's actually just the narrative of Diva Hero is you're always one card away from a great hand or from an OTK. This hand becomes absolutely busted if I draw any tuner. If I draw one of the three divas, if I draw a Sangan, which can search out a diva or a plague, or if I draw a plague itself, right? So any one of five cards, and in my more recent Diva Hero builds, I even play cards like Mystic Tomato. So even if I draw any one of those aforementioned cards, this hand becomes absolutely insane assuming I don't draw a malicious because then I can go future fusion, send Molly, send Treeborn, set the Sangan, set the Mystic Tomato, search out the Diva, search out the, the Plague, depending on the card, or just normal summon the Diva, normal summon the Plague, make Stardust and have Stardust behind a future fusion with a zero coming in two turns and an MST in return from different dimension. Very, very, very broken. Now, Lydia goes first, and I draw for turn, and I draw a Prodigy, which is not the best card in this situation. So because I have both Heavy and MST, I play Heavy Storm. Now, this is something to keep in mind. Generally, with Diva Hero, 
I do not like playing Heavy Storm unless I'm about to go for the OTK. However, in this particular scenario, it's a little bit different because I have another means to destroy spell and trap cards via MST. Also, I need this Future Fusion to resolve in order for me to even have a chance at winning this game. So I'm in a situation where I'm forced to play Heavy Storm and generally Diva Hero does not come up against cards like Starlight Road because Starlight Road is not very good against Absolute Zero. And if you want to know why, I have a video explaining in depth the interaction between Starlight Road and Absolute Zero. So if you're interested in learning more about that, please check out my video. Anyway, I Heavy Storm here, I get a plus one. I'm able to take out two very strong cards, uh, Wing Blast and Pulling the Rug. So now I can freely play my Future Fusion and I send Molly plus Freeborn Frog. Now, of course, there is consideration for sending a Diva. And the reason why I would consider sending a Diva is because I have both Soul Release and Return from a different dimension. So I could potentially Soul Release my own cards and return and bring them back and that would be really broken. However, it's so bad. There are cases when this can be good, but in this particular scenario, it's so bad. And the reason is because I'm only soul releasing my own cards in this case. And generally, you want to soul release your opponent's cards. So I just kind of have to hope and pray that I'm able to draw a tuner within a number of turns. And even if I don't draw a tuner, this future fusion is applying pressure. And if this future fusion does get dealt with, I have Treeborn to defend my life points. Now I've mentioned time and time again that I believe Treeborn Frog should be played in Diva Hero. In more recent lists, Treeborn Frog is not seen at all. But the reason why Treeborn Frog is so good is because he's a plus one every single turn. Generally, Diva Hero plays two to three Caius. He's excellent tribute fodder for Caius. He allows you to make a level six with Deep Sea Diva because you can go Diva into Gilman and then Synchro with Treeborn, that's six. Not to mention, he's just good defense. Every turn he comes back and he can protect your life points, which might not seem like much, but sometimes just having one body on the field makes a world of difference. So anyway, with this, I pass my turn and surprisingly, Lydia flips up Spine Gilman, which is good for me because it tells me that he's actually quite weak right now. So he attacks direct for 17. Unfortunately, there's nothing I can do about that. He sets a back row and passes a turn. I draw into Mind Control. Mind Control, a great card. We saw how it was used last game with Lydia taking my Deep Sea Diva and making a Colossal Fighter. But in this particular situation, it does absolutely nothing because I don't even have a Miracle Fusion. If I had a Miracle Fusion, then I'd be able to go like MST, hit the back row, Special Summon Prodigy, play Mind Control, play Miracle Fusion, banish his Gilman, banish my Prodigy, make zero, attack direct for 25. But that unfortunately is not the case. So I'm forced once again to just pass and I have to hope that I don't get OTK'd. Now the likelihood of me getting OTK'd is very low because I know this deck inside and out. And if he's just attacking with a Spine Gilman and he doesn't have any hero set up, then it's very low that I lose from 63 to zero. So that's definitely a part of any particular matchup that you play is you have to know the deck. When are you in a situation where you can lose? When are you in a situation where you can afford to just wait? So recognizing I'm in a situation just to wait, I pass. Lydia attacks direct for 17 again, and I draw into Torrential. So of course, this isn't the best draw. So I MST during the draw phase because I have a read that he has Torrential. And it was just a mind control, right? So speak of the devil. Now it's been two turns, so now my zero comes out, and I'm able to finally apply some pressure. So I attack direct, or not direct, I attack over the Spine Gilman, and I set to Torrential, and I pass. So now, although I'm not in the best situation, I'm not in a bad situation. So Lydia, thankfully, doesn't have the Heavy Storm, so he special summons Prodigy, and at this point, he's going to follow up with one of two plays, either sacrificing his Prodigy for Caius, and then playing Miracle Fusion, or summon Diva. And since Gilman's already in the grave, he can't make Black Rose, so that means he'd be forced to make a, a level six, which is Brionic or Goyu Guardian. So I'll allow him to continue. Now here, what I could do is actually activate Torrential at this point, because the purpose of him making Brionic is to pitch cards like Malicious and pitch cards like Plague. Now I have a read that he has Malicious because look at the first card that was destroyed with Heavy Storm. It was Phoenix Wing Wing Blast. So likely he wants to pitch a Malicious that's in his hand. 
However, he made an error here, right? If you see, he did two plus two equals six, right? He was skipping steps. I think what he wanted to happen, right, is this Brio to stick and then him to pitch the molly that is in his hand and then to make a level six and a level eight. But I had to remind him that two plus two is four this year and not six. So he makes army arm and then goes into Brionic. I asked him for Pryo. He pitches both molly and plague, which I'm okay with because now when this torrential resolves, the most I have to deal with is a level eight synchro because in order to make a level eight, he has to stack for plague. And even if he goes Miracle Fusion out to follow up, which I had to read on, I can deal with an absolute zero because it's not lethal. So I Torrential, I get rid of his Brio, and my read was correct. He actually did have a Miracle Fusion. He attacks direct for 25, and I draw into Gold Sark. Now, mind you, I still have not drawn into a Tuner yet, which is absolutely insane. It's absolutely insane. So I bring back Treeborn here during the standby phase, which actually, in hindsight, may have been a bit of a mistake and the reason why is because this turn i need to make something happen or i will lose the set and by bringing back treeborn actually i make zero's attack go up to three thousand whereas if i left treeborn in the grave zero would remain at 25. and the reason why that is relevant is because even though i have yet to pull into a tuner i can force my deck to pull into a tuner so let me show you how so first, I banish all his cards so that way he can't potentially uh, draw into a card like another Miracle Fusion or use the Malicious and Plague that's in his graveyard. And I set the return. Now, at this point, I also set a monster as well because I don't want to die to anything, right? He can, there's so many different plays that I could just die to randomly. Thankfully, he doesn't draw into a Caius because that would have sealed my fate. He attacks over the Prodigy. And this is what I mean. Whereas, yes, I did need back to bring the Treeborn for defense. At the same time, it boosted up the zero and the Treeborn never left the field. And because the Treeborn never left the field, this zero remains at 3,000. So what I decide to do is I draw on the Spine Gilman for turn. I have to make Lemonade. When life gives you lemons, make Lemonade. So I banish Molly for Molly. And if you notice, I did not activate the Gold Sark the previous turn. And the reason why I didn't activate the Gold Sark the previous turn was because for this setup right here. Now I go Gold Sark and I banish Plague and I activate Return and I'm able to bring back the Plague that I Sark for. So now I can make two level eights. So I make Stardust and I make Dark End and I normal summon Spine Gilman. Had I not brought back the Treeborn, then this level eight could have been a Thought Ruler Archfiend, which is really relevant because my life points are very low. Nevertheless, still bringing back Treeborn whether it was a misplay or not is debatable because on the one hand, I needed defense to stop me from losing. But on the other hand, it made absolute zero a bit stronger. So it really is debatable. Now that I'm talking through this again, I do think bringing back Treeborn was actually the correct play. So anyway, Darkens effect, send it, and then I'm able to tribute Stardust to negate and attack direct for 21, attack direct for 17. And this puts Lydia in a really, really, really tight spot. End phase, I bring back Stardust, and for turn, he draws, he shows me his hand, and he draws into either a Malicious or a Gravekeeper Spy. So a definitely good set by Lydia. I even mentioned him at the end, like, I understand why it's hard playing with cards like Malicious, and it's part of the reason why I stopped playing the deck, because there are some times where you can just draw so awful. And drawing the second Malicious... There's not a worse feeling in the world. I'm telling you, I've been through it. I have been through the gauntlet. I have come in second place. I've lost tournaments because I've drawn the Malicious at the worst times. But I mean, it's a part of the deck, right? Malicious, you love them, you hate them. But I even mentioned at the end, like Lydia, if you're ever free, you can bounce Diva Hero ideas off me. But that's going to wrap up this video, guys. What do you think is better? Old school Diva Hero or the new school Diva Hero? Personally, I really do like the innovation that Televisual have brought to Diva Hero, including Gravekeeper Spy, because it allows the deck to have some more defensive capabilities. But at the end of the day, I still prefer my old school style, which is the offensive version, and it's been working out for me. So with that said, guys, a true hero out. Peace. I hope everyone enjoyed the video. I would like to take this time to give a special shout out to my Patreons, Televisual, and Enraged Peacock. 
For those of you who are looking for exclusive content, please subscribe to my Patreon. The link will be in the description below. Thank you all for watching. And until next time, a true hero out. Peace. Subscribe or you too will be sent to the Shadow Realm.